Graham, first off, let's talk about uh, the yen. I guess if at first you don't succeed, you try, try again, and here we go, intervention again. Yeah, from a trading point of view, it's, it's more like a slap across the wrist for the currency traders because the yen and the Swiss franc have been one-way bets virtually all year. Now with this new debt uh, agreement in the U.S., people are concerned whether people are then going to worry about inflation, worry about the dollar, so they don't want to see an acceleration of the decline in the dollar. Mm -hmm. So to me, the, strength, the, 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 the amount of that move is also short covering on, on long yen position. All right. Well, we have a guest coming up from J.P. Morgan, the head of forex strategy for J.P. Morgan in Japan, says we're not going to break 80 to the U.S. dollar. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, even with all yeah. the firepower from, the, from Japan and the Bank of Japan? Well, what's going to happen, I believe, is now, now that the, people will be afraid to take the long position, uh -huh. so we're going, to, we're going to trade sideways for some time, and then I think gradually the yen will start to drift up again, along with the Swissy. Okay, um, and what's going to precipitate that? Are more concerns about the economy, economic growth in the U.S.? Well, I what think, sort of headwinds? Yeah, but you see, market moves more on psychology, uh -huh. in individual psychology, mass psychology, and the, in the investment herd. And the fund managers are a big herd, just trust me on that one. After 30 odd years of watching these guys, they've just been slapped because they're all short term traders. So now they won't want to put the position on again because the, 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 the Japanese will act again. Mm -hmm. So they just wait for it to cool down. Everyone knows that the dollar is not going to accelerate to the downside. Everybody need, knows the dollar needs to go to the downside. So it's, it's probably weeks or if not months mm -hmm. of sort of a sideways range okay and then let's see let's see what happens all right so uh, what about some that are calling for close to 70 for the yen u.s dollar cross is that a possibility in your view well it's a strong possibility yeah, yeah but not not in the short term we say short term maybe two three months is uh, that longer, what longer than longer that. Yeah. six months yeah maybe six, six months, months. Yeah. okay well we'll but you know for that. us again we, we follow that trend so let's see if there's any trend reversal coming from this well you are a trend follower uh, let's talk about the global markets I, I really want to talk to you about the u.s markets this is all eyes right now mm. on the u.s economy are we in a double dip recession that is a question considering uh, the economic data points that continue to yes. disappoint the market yeah well there's two sides of the sword right uh, if you look at the the S&P from the beginning of the year were roughly the same level now as we were at the beginning of the year. The Nasdaq is, is slightly higher. And what we see beneath the U.S. stock market is some stocks are hitting the ball out of the park. So, you know, we've got all this bad news, but the market's not cratering at the moment. There's a still a huge amount of money on the sidelines. So we're in that range. We're in the right stocks. We're in the Apples, the Baidus, the Wind Resorts, the Vegas, uh -huh. the IBMs, and they're all at highs and they're not coming off those highs. Okay, I'll get into those specific stock picks in just a few minutes, but I really want to talk about the broader markets right mm -hmm. now because we take a look at technical, so I know you're a trend follower, you yes. look at the technical analysis, yes. we have mm -hmm. the S&P 500 falling below its 200 day moving average right yeah. now, that's what it says on the blue picture, yeah. you're looking at me like you're well, 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 confused. Yeah, that's not a goodie, okay. but we have a bottom formation, we have two double bottoms earlier in the year, yeah. and we came down to that bottom level now. There's a chart for you over the last three years, you see that bottom, that bottom refers back to 2008 though. yeah but if you look to the right hand side of the chart there's two bottoms in place uh, and we got down towards that and we've risen from that that low so we could be in what's called a triple bottom formation but if you were to put some chart lines on yeah we'll see you'd see that we're in a we're in a trading range uh -huh. there's quite a big range mm -hmm. which for me is not great because <laughs> I like uptrends and yeah. we just go with them or downtrends and we're out okay so you know we, we're being enticed to stay in we're in the right sectors so you know we're, we're still with it um, what I want to see is some less bad news to encourage the market to break out to mm -hmm. the upside. Okay, well, we have non-farm payrolls coming out on Friday. Yeah, yes. that's the biggie. Is that, big, that's is that biggie. bad news or is that going to be good news? Uh, let's see what happens. That's, <laughs> and I also wonder about brinkmanship because, you know, in the 90s, don't forget, you know, I've been in this business 30 years, we were in a, the U.S. was in a mess again, the banks were in a mess. This time we've got to the edge of the precipice mm -hmm. with the debt, you know, sorting out the debt problem but I wonder if we got there because the next thing they were going to bring out was QE3 mm. because look guys we've looked over the precipice we don't want to go there right so come on we need to get some QE3 uh, and what do you think so your bets are on them for another stimulus package I think something's going to happen yeah. really yeah. something meaning that it's not necessarily going to be bond buybacks so well I don't, I don't know but I just I just think they're going to work because you know there's all these political shenanigans going on in the 52 states right 
There's the world picture, there's the US picture, and there's my state picture, you mm -hmm. know? So everybody's wrangling for something right. at this crazy point in time. Yeah, and uh, you know, right now we're looking at a cut in spending, which uh, some, including yeah. Paul Krugman, says this is absolutely the wrong thing to yes. do for the U.S. recovery yeah. right now. Yeah. What do you think? Well, it doesn't look good. But again, we're market action people. <laughs> and you know, you know, because fundamentals and logic uh -huh. doesn't always relate to the markets. Hence, the last two years have been the best years for the stock market in the last 50 years. Oh, but that's coming off a really low yeah, bottom. there you go. Yeah. And that's when most people don't want to And invest. right now we're going sideways. We're going sideways. We've got 0% side yeah, for but the we've had a very strong move. Yeah. And we're going sideways with the end of the world coming in Greece, Portugal, Italy, Spain, debt crisis. You know, the U.S. can't pay. I mean, come on. The, the thing should be cratering, right? All right, and okay. Then, uh, and then we have our friends across the border uh -huh. now becoming the de facto credit rating agency. Okay, I want to pick up uh, on you calling the U.S. broke after this break. We're talking to Kremlin. Like Richmond's fund, by the way, has returned an impressive 392 percent uh, since its inception service, in actually. 2002. Yeah, funds optimization service. Wow. How Most of the return is by being. 31% of the time in cash. In ca 31% of the time in yeah, cash? You don't make money on cash, though. Yes, but if you get out of the GFC uh -huh. with an 8% loss, and then you reinvest at the bottom when the market's already down 50 or 60%. The key to making long-term returns is not about how much you make when you're right, but how much, how little you lose when you're wrong. <laughs> so you cut losses right. and run profits. So it's about hedging, That's the then. secret. Not hedging, we exit, because okay. we're a boutique manager. So we can. We can completely exit the market, well, well, which is what we did. third cash. That's interesting. How much no, cash are you earning? 100% cash, 31% of the time. So 31%. on four or five different occasions, like GFC, yeah. we've done eight, 100% cash, no longer any exposure to uh -huh. the markets. So then February, March of 2009, I was screaming on programs like this, buy, 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 as chart after chart started to break to the upside when the end of the world was coming. Yeah, so, so you're a happy man, aren't you? Psychology is a big factor. Okay, what are you doing now? Do you have any cash? How much cash? Uh, no, we don't have any cash. You're we did fully have, invested. We did have cash, uh -huh. but no, we don't have you're any fully cash. You're fully invested, is that We're right? fully invested, yeah. Wow, what makes you so, yeah. so confident in the market? Well, because we can be sector and stock specific. So, uh, a few weeks ago, we were uh, loading up again on mainly silver stocks mm -hmm. and gold stocks. Everyone talks about gold and silver, but that's not the play. Because those prices have moved, yeah. but the gold and silver stocks had been moving down. That is true. So if gold goes up $100, that means there's $100 of extra profit to the bottom line of the mining company because uh -huh. they've got the same cost. So there was, there was a, a divergence of what should have been happening. Uh -huh. So when the gold and silver companies start to announce their earnings later, you'll see profit figures going through the roof. And silver is outperforming gold. That is true there as well. Go. Who would have thought that yeah. after the Merck uh, implemented those uh, trading taxes? So, so this market is very, very difficult for the man in the street because yeah. you need to get underneath the market. And it's very difficult for the big boys because if you manage $10 billion in a fund, you know, this is little drops in the ocean mm -hmm. here and there. So, so we're, we're boutique in nature. Okay, let's quickly bring up the gold chart, please, if we can. Let's quickly squeeze this in. Gold, do you care where gold prices are going? Uh, well, they're going high because the dollar's going lower. Um, we've had this strong move, and you can see the trend is still very positive. I mean, that's, that is a textbook trend. But again, what we want to look at is the upside going to be in gold, or is it going to be in, in the gold miners? Mm -hmm. And then if it's gold, is it silver? Right. It's silver. On a momentum, and it's gold miners it, or gold itself? It's gold miners. Okay. But if you, if, you ran, if you ran a momentum analysis on the, all the sectors of the U.S. stock market, all the sectors, mm -hmm. right? Number four at the moment in the last week or so is oh, silver mining stock. Okay. Gold's about number eight. All right. Gold, gold mining. We're going to start things off with a look at Diagong here, because Steve Engel was talking uh, earlier and saying, does the Diagong downgrade of the U.S. have any material real effect here? Yeah, that's what he wants to know. Do you think that that doesn't mean that China will buy fewer treasuries? No. <laughs> in a word. No. Um, it's a bit of muscle flexing, I think. And, you know, here we are with China, and, and we're going to state what a lot of people already know um, so no I don't, I don't think so and you know can they afford to not buy more US Treasury no they can't so it's just that uh, you know we're more on the center stage to me what That's, does everybody know well everybody knows that the US has been printing money like there's no tomorrow and there's a debt mountain there and whether you're AAA rated or not AAA rated you know 
the Emperor, to some degree, has got no close. <laughs> <laughs> what what damage is Graham does it do for the U.S. Treasury hold that China has? I mean, obviously it would devalue it if it lost the AAA rating. What does China do? Um, if, we, if we study global cycles and imperial cycles, if you like, we're going through that cycle now. Uh, but the world is too interlinked these days for them and us. So just China wants to just put its point over that maybe the other rating agencies haven't done it. That's probably why they've done it. Uh, so it's just this power but, thing. But if, but if, if they have this two trillion, I mean, if they, if they were to lose the AAA rating, what damage is done to China's two trillion dollars? I, I don't think a lot because the market doesn't mind the known knowns, if you like. It doesn't, it doesn't like unknowns. So everybody knows it's there, and whether it's AAA rated or not, the debt mountain's there and they've got to deal with it. And everybody's still hoping if we kick the can down the road far enough, mm. then we're going to come out of this. And, and, you know, I believe a lot in investor psychology. So I'm really concerned, or not concerned, I'm really interested to see that if the stock markets can continue to perform, then the wealth, you know, the wealth feel-good effect by in, in, you know people with superannuations etc you know it'll spill over into into spending so i think that's part of the theory